Okay, people. It's time to discuss the provinces. The provinces in the Philippines, okay? So, we got back a little while ago, a couple weeks ago, actually. We got back from Mindanao. We went to a small town in the province of Lanao del Norte. Okay, not far away, actually from Marawi City. I did a uh, little uh, Google Map uh, trip to Marawi City from where we were on my s smartphone just to see the route and everything. And uh, we were about an hour away, an hour away from Marawi City. Okay, so that's the area where we were. Uh, we had two airports to fly into uh, to choose from. We could have flown into Ozami City and taken a ferry across. Or we could have flown into Pagadian City and uh, taken about a one-hour bus ride. But we decided to fly into Cagayan de Oro and take a, a bus, or rather a van, took like an airport van, to uh, this small town in uh, Lanel del Norte. And it should have been about a five-hour, maybe four-hour bus ride. Uh, and it ended up being about five and a half, so it was pretty close. Pretty good bus ride. But my, my son almost got car sick twice. Uh, it's a little bit difficult. Some of these buses go rather fast. They accelerate fast and they brake hard. And accelerate fast and brake hard. And they do quick left and right turns twisting in and out of traffic trying to save an extra minute and there's really no way to get around it when you're driving with these airport style vans because the drivers get paid per trip so even if you pay the guy extra to drive slow he's going to drive fast because if he drops you off and makes it back he'll have enough time for maybe two more trips before going home in the evening. So he's going to get money. So anyway, those style of vans in the province are a nightmare. Okay, In northern Mindanao, uh, the government is expanding the highway. It's one lane highway, one lane each way. Okay, so two lanes. One lane going east, one lane going west. Okay. Uh, they're expanding it to make it two lanes and two lanes. And uh, the construction is really making everything difficult, uh, bumpy in spots and so forth. So it wasn't pleasant drive from Cagandoro to this town uh, to start out. And then we stayed there because my wife's mother lives there. And we want the kids to have a good relationship with their Lola, their grandmother. And she comes and stays for a couple of months with us at a time. And uh, it's nice, you know, having her here. But she only speaks Bisayan. It's difficult for her to get around uh, Cavite, where everyone speaks Tagalog. But she can. It's okay, you know. She doesn't mind coming here. She enjoys spending time with her grandkids. And we've got a lot of family in the area, actually. But her home is there. So she wants to be with at her home. So we had to go visit her for her 70th birthday, okay? And so we spent a good deal of time there, uh, over a week. Now, I was a little bit shocked, okay? There's no sidewalks, there's no paved road where she lives, okay? There is the highway close by, but if we had driven our own car, we would have had to take a ferry from Manila to <laughs> Mindanao and driven, okay? so. It would have been difficult to get our car there, but if we did have our own car there, we'd have to leave it parked on the side of the highway and then walk to her neighborhood because there's no road there. There's, uh, there's little paths that you walk to the little community where she lives. And uh, there's no paved sidewalks or anything where she lives. So it's really muddy. Uh, the stray dogs that are in every Philippine community, you know, poop wherever, so uh, it, it's difficult, you know, the environment there, okay, there's there's no uh, indoor plumbing in her house, 
so you have to carry the water in to the house. Uh, they do have toilets and a septic system, but you have to carry the water in, okay? Uh, there's no elect there is electricity, but there's no Wi-Fi, there's no internet, there's no refrigerator there, and there's no air conditioning, okay? So, personally, I didn't have a problem with it. It's very shaded where she lives. It's a little bit high in elevation. Uh, I, I was completely comfortable the whole time. I didn't need the air conditioner. My baby, who's not yet one year old, cried for probably the first two days and broke out in a rash because there's no air conditioning. Uh, my older son, who's three, uh, was okay. But the first couple of nights, he would wake me up and tell me, Dad, our house, I want our house. Buy a taxi, buy a taxi, Dad. Let's go, let's go our house. Go our house. So I had to apologize to him. I'm sorry, son, we're here at Lola's house. We're, we're going to spend, it's her birthday. We're going to spend some time here with Lola. So eventually he did have some fun. Now, there's a lot of good things about the province, okay? There's a lot of good stuff. One, clean air, okay? There's no pollution there at all. Two, it's cool. It's nice temperature because you're shaded all the time. You're a little bit high in elevation where we were. Uh, it's, it's cool temperatures. I didn't miss the AC at all. I slept great. I slept a lot of the time there, as a matter of fact. Uh, three, it's fun, okay? There's not a lot to do there except work, and when you're done working, you party. So a lot of people die in their 50s because they just drink themselves to death. So if, if you enjoy having a beer or two with people, um, everybody's going to love practicing their English with you, and uh, you're going to have fun. I, I had a lot of fun there. Uh, the food, the quality of food is excellent. There's a huge amount of fresh fruit. And they had a goat. There was an actual living goat there when we got there. And they told me that was for me because they heard that I loved eating goat, which I do. I got used to that from my trips into Mexico. And where I lived along the border in South Texas, uh, you could buy goat meat at the grocery store. But it's expensive. But anyway, uh, they actually killed the goat for me and roasted it there over an open fire. Fantastic food. Amazing food, okay? And the reason why nobody has a refrigerator is because everybody eats everything all the time. So if uh, across the way, sort of across from the square or whatever, where Lola lived, uh, there was a man who was helping her finish her house, uh, construction kind of guy he passed away before he got there so his funeral was actually a couple of days after uh, Lola's birthday her 70th birthday and so a lot of family converged on on this little house and uh, so the wake and the funeral was that same time we were there for the trip so that's another party you know it's a different kind of vibe from a birthday party but it, nevertheless it is a party um, so we had a lot of events there, in other words, okay, and, and then, of course, we go to the family cemetery, we went into town, so my baby had a rash, okay, so he got sick, and, uh, the baby that's not yet one, and so we went into town to go to the doctor. Now, my wife's sister is a nurse, she graduated nursing school. Uh, that's another benefit from uh, living in the province is there are good schools. The Philippines has excellent schools. So no matter where you are, you're going to be able to have access to good schools. I'm convinced. Uh, she is an excellent nurse and uh, she worked for a while in this hospital in this town. So she knew people. So we went to town to go to the hospital to see the pediatrician to get some kind of medicine for the baby. Okay, and there's a Jollibee in the town. So I took our three-year-old to the Jollibee while we're waiting around the hospital. Okay, here's my shock, okay? Not only does Lola's house have no paved sidewalks, no paved streets, 
no air conditioning, no refrigerator, no Wi-Fi, but there's no doctor. <laughs> so, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, we had to go to three different places. We went to a hospital, we went to a clinic, and we went to another clinic before we could find a doctor. That's life in the province, okay? So you're going to have bad internet connection. You're going to have a lack of infrastructure. So in, in our case, it was lack of plumbing, lack of sewage, and uh, lack of uh, medical care. Really, substantial medical care in the area. Uh, difficult to get around, but uh, there's no traffic. No traffic at all. So it, it, there's a lot of positives. Very inexpensive. Uh, a lot of fun easy to get to know people. People are anxious to get to know you. There's not a lot of Americans there. There's not a lot of Brits there. Although we went to the one nice grocery store. It's called uh, Prince, I think it was called. Uh, kind of like a, a Walmart sort of store. A little bit of everything there. They had a really small, very poor uh, toy section my three-year-old was devastated that there's just no toys there's one pizza place in this town and I got pizzas for all the kids and the kids aren't eating the pizza and I was astonished you know why are the kids not eating the pizza and then I ate a piece and it's awful it's terrible it's like uh, frozen pizza like a really cheap frozen pizza in the US really not good I like eating cardboard with cheese. Very cheap cheese on top. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, there's a lot of negatives, okay? There's not a lot of really good foods. You're not going to be able to buy strawberry jam at the store. You're going to have difficulty getting online at all. Uh, if you have electrical power, it's going to be iffy. The power went off on us twice while we were there in one week. Uh, as I said before, there's no plumbing. So the infrastructure is difficult, okay? But the expenses are low. The fresh air is amazing. Amazing. Uh, I had a, a pomelo, okay? It's like Philippine version of grapefruit, but it's very, very thick. Sorry, very, very thick skin. I had a pomelo. I'd never eaten a pomelo that tasted like that before. It tasted almost like a tangerine. Kind of a sweet sort of uh, sweet sour kind of flavor that was really rich. It, it just, I was shocked at how wonderful this pomelo tasted. The fruit is amazing. Uh, the goat was amazing. It was fresh. I mean, it was a living goat that they killed right there for our arrival. Uh, there was not any good cake, okay? She had uh, uh, some kind of like uh, a tower of uh, cupcakes for her birthday. And the kids loved the cupcakes. The kids loved it, okay? But when you come from a family of bakers like I do, the, the quality of the bread is not that good. Uh, so I was anxious to get back. I told my wife that there's no way I could live here because if our kids get sick, it's going to be difficult to get medical care at all. Even whether it's competent medical care or not, it's just there's no medical care. <laughs> it took us a while to find a doctor during the day. Can you imagine at night? Emergency care? Okay. So the infrastructure is bad. Medical care is iffy. The internet very iffy uh, there's a lot of difficulties with living in the province but it's inexpensive it's clean there's no traffic there's no pollution the food is amazing and the company is fantastic you're going to be a celebrity when you go there you're going to have fun but uh, it's just not for me and not for my son <laughs> We love the city. We love Manila. And everybody talks about Manila as being so polluted and so congested. You know, watch the movie The Odd Couple with Walter Matthau, okay? 
And think about that, okay? It's a very polluted environment, very congested, and everybody's having a ball throughout the whole movie, and you're going to laugh through the whole movie, and you're going to forget about how polluted that environment is and how congested it is, okay? Because it's fun. And that's Manila right there. For me, that original movie, The Odd Couple, okay, 1969, whatever it was, Walter Matthau. Amazing movie, fun movie. That's life in Manila, okay? Now, I'm an hour away from Manila. I'm about an hour, depending on traffic, maybe an hour and a half away from the U.S. Embassy in Manila. I'm in Cavite province. It's cold here right now. Um... January 3rd, so uh, I'm definitely not in Manila, but I'm close. Well, take care, everybody. Just wanted to give you my thoughts on life in the province.